Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about the idea of irrational thoughts causing maladaptive emotions. I tend to believe that our emotions are caused by our thought processes. That is, most of the things that we feel are generated by patterns in our head, in our brain, that involve interpreting the world around us. And I think that if we're thinking rationally, we're more likely to have emotional responses to things that are kind of adaptive or empowering. Like our emotions uh, flow more easily into constructive things. Whereas if we're thinking in ways that are distorted or irrational, like if our thoughts have logical fallacies, our emotional reactions are more likely to be maladaptive, and they can be maladaptive in different ways. Like, our emotions might be sort of so extreme in a certain situation that they cause us to act in a way that's harmful to ourselves or others. But in other cases, the emotions might just be kind of mismatched and like lead us astray. I'm someone who tends to operate on an emotional level uh, a lot, so I don't necessarily try to reason everything through, but I've come to realize that even when I'm not consciously aware of the reasoning in my head, that there often is some sort of analysis or reasoning that I might not be consciously aware of. I want to give some examples of situations in which a a uh, fallacy in thinking can lead to an emotional reaction that is unempowering. One of them, let's say I am trying to get something done, and I need to enlist someone else's help. So one example of this would be, this has come up a lot in school, if I go to an administrator and I want to get an exception to a rule. Let's say the first time I go to talk to them, they don't give me what I want, and they voice some objections. If I respond to this by having a thought process that says, oh, this person doesn't care about me, they're never going to give me what I want, that's an irrational thought process, because I don't necessarily know what the other person is thinking. And it's also not true, like I can't say with certainty, that I'm never going to get what I want. But that thought that is in my head, as I'm thinking that, is a pretty extreme one. So if I'm thinking, I'm never going to get this from this person, and the person doesn't care about me, I might feel really hopeless about the situation, I might feel angry or frustrated at them, and if I'm feeling hopeless, that feeling is likely to kind of shut me down in that situation. Like, it's going to make me walk away from that situation. I'm, I'm not going to be persistent with this person. Uh, from experience, I've interacted with a lot of people who have voice objections when I've asked for things. And one thing that I've learned consistently I've seen this is that people can sometimes have legitimate issues that they want to bring up, issues of concern. So, in many of the cases in my life, it simply hasn't been true that I'm never going to get what I want from these people. And in many cases, these people have demonstrated to me over time that they do care about me. So sometimes I might bring up a concern and the person says, hey, I'm concerned about this, and so on. And if I take the time to listen to them, in some cases, I realize that they have a valid concern, and we can work out a different solution that kind of addresses everyone's concerns. If I am thinking more rationally, when someone raises a concern, I'm not going to sort of extrapolate things that I don't know. I'm not going to assume that I know what the other person is thinking, and I'm not going to assume that I know the future, because that's irrational. The future is undetermined, and unless you're omniscient and there's this sort of predestination, which is something I don't believe in, it's just not possible to know that. So the rational response in a situation to that like that, is to just listen to what the person is saying and to observe it. Well, this person said this, and then I can examine what they said, and I can engage with what they said. And I think that's a much more rational way of thinking. And I've noticed that when I think in that way, I tend to feel much better when I'm in these situations. Like, I tend to uh, feel more hopeful, and I also tend to stay more calm. That's just one of many examples. I could think up tons of other sorts of examples. Examples involving relationships, interpersonal conflict, 
projects that I'm working on, anything. I think in any aspect of our life it's possible that our thoughts can get distorted and sort of corrupted with logical fallacies. So I want to throw this idea out there because I found it really empowering. I found that if my emotions aren't working for me, it's often a sign that there's something going on in my thinking that involves sort of errors of reasoning. And that if I can examine my thinking and I can start thinking more rationally, my emotions start flowing in a more empowering way and just naturally leading me towards better results. So I hope you find this helpful. I would love to hear from you. Uh, please comment if you have any questions, anything that you want to add. And uh, please subscribe to my channel if you want to hear more of what I have to say. I really appreciate new subscribers. Thank you!